Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today we are gonna be trying out some fun, out of the box DIYs. I cannot wait to show you how I achieved all of these things and how they turned out because it was absolutely amazing. And all I wanna do is make more, more, more. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. To start off, we are going to play around with the StarCraft puff vinyl i have been wanting to try this out i bought this stuff before we even moved and it's been sitting downstairs and i was ready to try it out so we are going to get into this i am going to hop onto my computer i designed this image mama of both established 2016 make sure just like with any heat transfer vinyl you need to mirror your image now with this vinyl when you take it over to the mat heat transfer vinyl like normal heat transfer vinyl you're supposed to put the glossy side down it even like reminds you when you're in your cricket to put the glossy side down with this one we are going to put the glossy side up when we cut so that was a little confusing to me at first and i literally had to think about it like over and over again when putting it into the machine but your glossy side is going to be up your matte side is going to be down i'm going to go ahead and feed this through cut it and weed my vinyl and now we are going to take this sweatshirt that i had pre-bleach some time ago and this is what we're going to use for today's project so i'm going to go ahead and just pre-press this get any of the excess moisture out that's just a teflon sheet that's attached to the top of my um what, what, what is this called oh my gosh i'm losing my mind you guys know so as you can see right here it's like a matte carrier sheet now this does not have any tack to it like regular heat transfer vinyl so it's not going to like cling to your fabric you're going to need to get heat resistant tape you can buy this from cricut you can buy it from amazon the tape i'm using is from amazon i will make sure to link that in my amazon store for you and so is that little t-shirt guideline that i'm using around the neck so this is going to help us keep this in place you could see i mirrored my image so that we can read it correctly now i'm going to put it under my press the video that I watch, which I will attach down in the description box, said to press at, I believe it was 280 for 12 seconds. So I did that first. This is going to be our first press. Then after, again, I watched a video, you're supposed to take your carrier sheet off and you're supposed to do this step very slowly and i will say that i noticed not all of it was like clinging to the fabric but again you're supposed to do a second press the video said to do the second press without the teflon sheet attached and then do it again the 280 for like 12 seconds so after i was done with that the letters were all attached However, I was kind of confused. I really thought that the puff vinyl was going to be like a smooth texture, at least from what I, I feel like I've seen of it. And this gave me more of like a letterman's jacket, you know, like the fur, like the furry letters. That's what it gave me. I also learned that choosing the right font matters when using this if i would have like weeded out the middle of this it would have looked really good i mean you could still tell what it says but definitely not so i'm gonna try it again on a pink sweater this time i used a different font this was after my first press you could already see it kind of puffing up now i wanted to try a second press after peeling it with the Teflon sheet on. I wanted to see if it made any kind of difference whatsoever or if it was an added step I didn't need to take. So I am peeling this very, sorry, Momo's here. Um, I am peeling this very carefully. And once I do that, I'm going to take the heat press, same temperature, and I'm going to press it with that Teflon sheet on. And to be honest, 
I don't think it made any kind of difference, except I do feel like, like it was a little bit puffier versus like on some of the ones on the black sweater, I felt like some of the vinyl got, I want to say like melted almost like pressed down more. I hope y'all are picking up what I'm putting down here. Um, so I'm going to just show you again. We're going to like run over this. So this is the mama sweater and you can blatantly tell that this was not the right font for it. I did this on the sleeve. That font came out very clear. You can see it. Um, and again, if there's a different puff vinyl out there that doesn't have this exact texture, let me know. I don't hate it whatsoever. It just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, I do like it though. And I'm going to have to, there are specific washing instructions, which the gal in the video uh, does recommend. I think it was like cold water, tumble dry, you know, the basics when you're dealing with heat transfer vinyl. But I love this one, crafting YouTube and comfy clothes. This one is not my size, so it will be available for purchase um, on my website. So go check that out, you guys. Now we're going to head to my restroom where we're gonna try out this white bright. Saw this on TikTok, I've watched videos and I had to try it. I am taking some flannels that my girlfriend uh, Tina sent me and I am going to be laying them in a shallow tub and I am just trying to get the bottom half of the flannels in here as, as well as the sleeves. I do want to note on this video, you guys, follow the instructions. You need to be in a well-ventilated area. You should be wearing a mask and you should be wearing gloves. I am not doing any of those. It is negative degrees outside and I'm working with what I got, but please follow the instructions and safety rules as far as the white bright goes, please. Okay, so we are going to be putting our flannels in. Then I got a couple other flannels and I did almost like a tie dye um, thing with them. Like I just scrunched them up and put like a bunch of rubber bands over them just to see what this was going to do. So I'm going to get that white bright. It comes in in powder form and I'm gonna sprinkle this on. This might be new to some of you or some of you are like, oh my gosh, this has been around forever. I just found this out. So. I am going to just sprinkle it directly on. A lot of people do it a lot of different ways. And then you are going to need, the bottle says warm water. However, the videos I've watched said boiling water works best. So I boiled some water. You're gonna pour it on and it's going to start like steaming right away. This is why you want a mask. And you're gonna pour that over now this is obviously better like if you live in nice weather this is way better to be doing outside so you can already see the colors start changing on these flannels don't worry hank does not stay in there uh i make him leave so um anyways you can already see the color start stripping from this cloth this is a great alternative 
other than bleach, especially when you're using 100% cotton. Um, the bleach eats away at it. You have to use less bleach so you don't really get like as white as you want. So I am going to just kind of be turning these around. You'll see too that the, um, the color of your water is going to start like changing color obviously it's taking out the color of your fabric but it does not bleed into each other so that was something that i had been worried about because the water was like bright yellow because of that bright flannel i have on the bottom right but it ended up doing just fine i needed a little bit more boiling water because um my like tub was is slanted downwards so it wasn't covering everything and the longer you keep it in here the longer it's going to strip so if you see that like you're achieving the color that you want you are going to pull those pieces of clothing or items that you're using out of the water i am just going to um I have my cold water running and I am going to rinse that out. Now the bottle says to just wash these um, in a regular load. Like you don't have to do anything special to them um, after you wash. So I was thoroughly impressed with the outcome of these. It is a great, like I said, alternative to bleach. And I, I love the way they turned out. I also wanted to try a couple other fabrics which was a 50 50 blend um gildan sweatshirt and then like a comfort something i don't know i got it at dollar tree shirt again i poured the powder over it then put the bleach now you can see this pink sweater is like stripping right away and i wanted to have some of that pink still in there so i hurry up i flip it around and this is where i'm saying like you can take out your items once they reach the color that you want or you could leave it in and it'll continue stripping that color so now after i rinsed everything wrung it out i'm going to put it in the wash i use clear detergent since i sell my flannels don't want to give anybody itchy skin okay so now just to show you i thought i was going to talk on here and i changed my mind so this does not show you like the the sweater itself is still like a little 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 light pink and then you get that marbling effect in there and then the flannels you guys turned out amazing i mean in my personal opinion and you can see depending on the color of the flannel maybe what like fabrics they used or thread or i i you, know, you guys i'm not like i don't know everything and anything about fabric but you can see the colors are going to be different on each of these flannels and i love how different they are how they turned out i could not have gotten this effect with bleach because it would have completely stripped like the actual fabric and made holes in it it would have just eaten through all of this if i would have left bleach on this long to get that look now this one was one of the tie-dye ones and it is my favorite i am keeping this one i am obsessed with this light blue color you get that cream the dark blue with the bright pink still in there from its original color love this and our last one is another one that i did the tie-dye on and look at the bright patches of color obsess i'm going to be using this so much more and trying different ways of using it all right so now we're going to have a little fun and i'm going to try to make a patch for the back of one of these flannels so i designed this in canva i printed it on my sublimation printer and if you guys want a video with more detail about sublimation let me know it's not in this video all right so i cut around my edges i'm using a hundred percent polyester fabric from um walmart you need a high percentage of polyester when dealing with sublimation i am cutting a round my image to get my size now i'm going to tape that face down in the middle using my heat resistant tape i did pre-press my fabric to get that excess moisture out now i'm going to take it over and then i um, did it for 400 degrees 60 seconds 
and this came out so beautiful it's like almost like a watercolor image so that's why some of you are like that's not bright for being sublimation now we are using this heat and bond ultra hold another one i saw on tiktok and had to try for myself i've never tried this and i thought what a great alternative than taking out my sewing machine so on this piece of paper they come in different sizes they even come on rolls you're going to see one side um, is a little bit more shinier has a little texture and the opposite side is like a matte piece of paper almost so what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of fabric and i have my piece of fabric upside down so the image is face down and then i'm taking the shiny side of that heat in bond and placing it on the back of my image i hope i'm explaining this like clearly for you so i have my heat press set for 305 and where the packaging says two seconds i pressed it for four seconds and once i do that i lift it up and you guys it was i it was attached i was like there's no way two seconds four seconds no well then i go ahead and i cut around my image i did that off camera and so we still have that piece of paper that's on here so i'm going to peel that paper back and i am going to lay this on the back of my flannel now this does not have any tack to it either so you're going to need that heat resistant tape so right now it just it doesn't feel like anything it feels like almost like a piece of paper and you're going to lay that on wherever you want your image to be and now we're going to do the same thing th uh, 305 and this time we're going to do it for eight seconds the packaging says and you can also use this with a household iron um, i was very impressed with how this came out however I've never used this before, so I will have to keep this one for myself. And I just want to run it through a couple wash cycles to see how it holds up. I would never want to sell this on my website or in my booth, just not knowing if it's going to fall apart after one wash. So if you guys have had experience with this, please let me know. So after I'm done, I take it off and look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. Like what a great way of turning a pre-loved flannel into something new again. Absolutely love it, you guys. I was like over here like, oh my gosh, is this coming up? Can I pull in it? Like, you know, can I pull it or no, it's attached. I could not even get what fingernails I do have underneath that. Love it. And then this is just like a little added bonus clip. Um, that marble sweater that I had, I'm gonna lint roll it, and I designed this image in Canva. It's inspired by Vans, the, the company, the shoe company, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I designed this, and then I tore around the edges because it had some flat edges, wasn't digging that. I'm gonna put it face down. There is a piece of butcher paper in between my sweater, and then I'm taking it over. I put butcher paper on top, pressed it at 400 for 60 seconds. And you guys, I am obsessed with this. And please tell me why this is not my size. This is an extra large and I am fuming. John's like, why do you do that to yourself? Why don't you just buy all of like the initial pieces in a size medium? That way you can keep them, test them out. But then that's the thing I would keep all of them. So let's go ahead and recap look at everything we made today so we did the white bright with this strip some of that pink so it's not as bright as the one that you'll see next and look at that beautiful sublimated image this will maybe since this is a 50 50 blend it might fade just a little bit after the first wash but to me it makes it look more retro and then here is this is actually what the pink sweater initially looked like this is the crafting youtube and comfy clothes this is a size large it will be available on my website as well and i definitely think think uh, the second press with the Teflon sheet was better than no Teflon sheet and our flannels you guys I cannot find like the proper lighting in this basement you know hanks around so I got like a plywood piece and I, I'm trying to show you guys 
the beauty. But look at how cool these turn out, you guys. I hope this inspires you to really get out of your comfort zone and try things. Like how fun would it be to get your girlfriends together or your family, your grandchildren, your daughter, you know, and just go thrift store shopping together. Grab some flannels, you know, like try these things out. You you never know if you're going to be into something until you try. Like I never knew this would be a fun passion of mine and I love making flannels. I love how artistic that I can get with them. I love that you can take something that somebody else discarded and make it new again. And love this patch. I really hope that it holds up in uh, the washing machine. Uh, and again, you guys, I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you having fun with me. Today is Try It Tuesday. Oh my gosh, I can't forgot, believe I mentioned to forget that. The playlist will be in the description box. Other creators do join in um, on Try It Tuesday, so make sure to check that playlist out, and I will also put it in my comments as well. I hope you all have a fabulous week. I will be here with a um, kind of collective Iron Orchid Designs video on Saturday. Have an amazing week and happy, happy new year.